Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. Thank you very much for joining us on another uh, great video we have here today. So for today we're going to be covering something that I think every single person, whether you're new, you've been in the hobby for a while, um, everyone experiences. Specifically when you're setting up a new tank or buying you know, a new fish, uh, you're going to experience this you know, no matter what. So in some cases it can be a pretty controversial topic, uh, but I think it's one that you know is going to be or hopefully make for a good video. Uh, more importantly, maybe give you some knowledge, uh, give you kind of my way of thinking. I do want to put out a disclaimer though here at the very beginning. Kind of what I'm saying, you know, everything I'm going to be talking about is really based a lot on. Uh, personal experience. So personal experience I've had with uh, this tank you guys see in front of you, um, the various tanks I've personally built, uh, as well as also uh, tanks that I've helped uh, fellow friends and uh, reefers, you know, uh, take care of. I've obviously also gathered some knowledge from reefers that have been in it for quite a while. And um, so yeah, just wanted to throw that disclaimer out. It's really based on my knowledge, uh, whether first-hand knowledge or stuff I've gathered from other people. So in today's video, guys, what we're going to be talking about is going to be marine ick. So ick is, is something that I think a lot of people are very afraid of. I think a lot of people don't understand it, um, and I think they really go above and beyond uh, sometimes, you know, doing unnecessary things uh, when it comes to ick. So I want to debug a few things here in this video. I really want to dig deep, not too deep into it, but dig a little bit deeper than just talking very simple about ick, uh, the various medications or you know, quarantining or anything of that sort. So the first thing, especially for new people, you're probably saying, well, what is ick? Well, ick is a white spot found on a fish. Um, but the thing with ick, it can also be confused with velvet. Uh, now, velvet is a lot more deadly than ick, uh, but it can, it can, can kind of be seen and look very similar. Uh, the main way to kind of display ick, you can kind of see it here on, on a fish in front of you, um, it's as if someone sprinkled salt on a fish. So ick is a parasite that typically will go under the, the skin of the fish. Um, it'll kind of live there. It'll also go um, in the gills. And in some severe cases, it'll cause the fish to uh, get pretty weak. More importantly, lose appetite, uh, essentially starving itself. Um, not really purposely starving, but the ick will really start um, eating it up and um, the fish will, will, you know, will stop eating. But honestly, in my experiences and the people I've surrounded myself by, um, it's a very rare case for a fish to stop eating because of ick. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. So for you guys watching and saying, nah, that's a lie. I'm not saying it's impossible. It does happen. Uh, but it's typically other causes because you got you to gotta realize once ick attacks, it's because the fish is immune system is down. So by it having a weak immune system, you can imagine what other stuff or fungus or infections a fish is going to catch. So at the end of the day, it's not like we take these fish to a doctor really find out what caused the death. Um, we're just really going based off what we see. A few things that cause ick, okay? The main causes of ick that we find in our reef tank is going to be caused uh, by stress. So it's typically induced by stress, and it's probably the number one uh, cause it'll it'll cause it. Uh, typically, healthy fish will develop a slime coat uh, that won't allow really the ick to do anything to it. It'll kind of just uh, come on and slide right off. That's that's why probably if you've ever grabbed a fish, hopefully if you're watching this video, you probably have. Uh, you'll notice that the fish do have um, a pretty slimy coat. Now that's not just so, you know, when predators try grabbing them, they're really slippery, but it's also for 
uh, parasites and funguses and so on um, to really not not grab onto them so there's you know if, if you do any sort of reading um, on how to cure ick you're gonna find a few things you're gonna find um, copper you're gonna find hyposalinity um, and you're gonna find incre increasing the temperature now there's also other remedies out there there's uh, I forget the brands um, that offer supposedly cures for ick um, but typically the the most common one is going to be your your copper your hypo uh, salinity and increase in the temperature so with copper it's very effective with ick the only downside is it will affect the fish it will affect the fish's uh, lifespan so it won't live as long um, I believe it also affects the liver um, and I think the biggest side effect about or the bad thing about copper is you can't use it inside a reef tank uh, because it'll kill invertebrates now when we say invertebrates that's snails uh, crabs shrimp but also your coral so it's a very toxic uh, metal that yeah it'll directly you know take care of the parasite but it's very very bad for uh, the fish and also very bad for pretty much our tank kind of think of it ick or sorry think of copper um, if you were you know someone that had uh, cancer you can think of it kind of as chemotherapy so chemotherapy is very good at taking care of cancer but it has very very strong side effects on the human body um, but you know I guess for you to live a few more years or you know X amount of years it's worth it in some cases so kind of think of copper in that way the next thing um, hyposalinity so hyposalinity is running the salinity very very low um, uh, typically you can't again do this in a reef tank why because you're gonna stun everything else in the reef tank so you for copper and hyposalinity you have to take the fish out of the tank and put it in a quarantine so um in that one it, it's it's pretty effective um although not 100 percent effective because uh what the it can do it can go ahead and lie dormant so when the salinity does come up um, i've heard cases where uh, it'll come back so these methods i'm talking about guys i've never used them i'm going to kind of tell you my secret method that i use to cure it a little bit later um the last thing is uh, increasing temperature so by you increasing the temperature you're going to speed up uh, the growth rate the maturing rate of this parasite and you're going to make its life cycle a lot shorter um, not by uh, how should i say it you speed up its life cycle so it's as if you, you as a human if there's a way you can speed up for you to turn 80 years old um, to speed up your life cycle that's kind of how it how it'll it'll take care of it by you increasing the water temperature and yet again you can't really do this in the reef tank uh, you got to take it out put it in a quarantine um, and yeah and like I said there isn't a, a few other methods on the market with certain uh, medication but we're not going to be covering that here in today's videos these are just some of the few um, points about it so one very interesting topic and and i really want to talk about you guys may be aware of uh, rico's aquarium uh, rico is is a guy that i've been following kind of from day one and uh, the guys earned my respect i mean just being straight up with you guys if you check out his tank and, and what he has done uh, the previous tank he he shut down it was just amazing what he was able to create with that uh, not to mention he's been in the hobby for over 20 years so the amount of knowledge you know a person like that has um, it, it's it's really second to none I mean they 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 have a person like that just has so much value and so many points another day he was doing a video a live stream or it's funny because he was covering these exact topics and it was just great to see someone with that much experience was the thing was I had a similar thought process that he was talking about um, and it was so great to be reassured um, that you know my, my thought process wasn't that crazy after all so 
one of the the interesting things he I remember he was talking about is you know generally in the hobby you're going to hear people quarantining fish right but I believe and so did Rico believe that people quarantine fish kind of the wrong way generally speaking a quarant you quarantine the fish is you putting a fish in salt water uh, you know that's similar to your your water chemistry in your tank and just monitor the fish just check it out make sure it's okay make sure nothing's crazy but generally speaking when you hear quarantine in our hobby you're gonna hear people um, immediately throwing the fish in copper now I don't know about you guys but I have I have a daughter and it's kind it's just like Rico said it's just like you throwing your kids in a room with chemotherapy even if they're perfectly healthy so it's like a doctor or someone telling you look there's cancer out there in the real world um, you know just just to be on the safe side we're gonna put your kid through chemo just to be safe even though they're healthy and he was totally spot-on when he made that comment because it's so true there I know so many people that will throw perfectly healthy fish into copper and you know they never even showed any signs of ick whatsoever um, any signs of parasite they automatically throw them in and I mean if you're talking about unhumane stuff uh, you know there's always so many people complaining about the tank police and putting them in small tanks I mean I don't know about you but throwing a perfectly healthy fish in a tank with copper shortening its lifespan um, that doesn't seem too nice to me <laughs> you know I wouldn't want to be thrown in a room you know or them to do chemotherapy if I was perfectly healthy um, so it, it was it was a great topic he he really touched on um, I also believe just like he believed that a quarantine should be a place for you just to monitor your fish not medicate it just just look at it look at the remember guys I think too many people in this hobby try to play God mother nature has been doing its thing for billions and billions and billions of years so the fact that we come in the picture trying to play God and trying to solve all these issues mother nature knows how to take care of itself I believe um, and I mean you know let's play a little be honest here don't you think ick is also in the ocean uh, of course it is so how is it that you know millions of fish aren't dying from ick now yeah a lot of you may argue well it's because they're not stressed there but I mean to a certain level you gotta say I'm sure there's fish that get ick in nature and eventually they build a slime coat they build an immune and they never get it again and honestly I believe ick at least from my experience is kind of like having a cold or I guess a flu shot is or a flu is something we can compare to when you get a certain strain of flu or a certain strain of cold you will probably never get that strain again now I'm not saying for sure you won't obviously I'm not a doctor but generally speaking you'll always you know you'll build immunity to that certain strain and that's why we get flu shots because they're trying to build immunity for that certain strain I believe from my experiences ick is kind of the same way once your fish really gets ick um, it kind of will never get it again even if you stress it out And a prime example of that has been the three or four tangs I've added in my tank um, I've added a few tangs and at the beginning they have a little bit of ick but I've noticed after a while after they got it and they got over it the next time I went to catch them and we put them in their rehoming tank they not they didn't break out with any ick whatsoever so that quickly led me to believe I was like huh I wonder if they built an immunity to a certain extent to the ick and based on what I've seen that is the case and I think uh, another important thing guys that, that we got to realize is mother nature knows how to take care of herself obviously there's going to be fish just like anything else the weak are always going to die right it, it's it's just a cycle of life um, but I think that generally a fish has everything it needs to take care of it even even in our setups now given our setups make the ick concentration a little bit more why because they're in small tanks versus a big ocean um, but I I've personally never had a fish die from ick um, I have had fish die from brook specifically clownfish 
um, and that'll be a different topic for a different day. But I think ick is something that new reefers particularly just go overboard with. I really don't, you know, I've seen guys that get ick and right away they message me saying, hey, do you think I need to uh, undo my whole tank, take out all my fish and quarantine everything? I'm like, no, 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 no. Leave the fish in there, feed the fish, go on with your day, treat it as if there's nothing wrong. Sure enough, these people message me a, a few weeks, few months later saying the fish is as happy as it's ever been. Um, you know, everything's great. So I just believe that too many people try to uh, really go overboard with it. And remember guys, mother nature knows how to take care of herself. So if you were to ask me, the best way to take care of ick, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't try to avoid it, guys. Actually, I'm not saying purposely go get ick, but the sooner and the quicker your tank is exposed to ick, the better off it's going to be in the long run. Um, my tank is a prime example of it. Uh, I've yet, I did see ick at the beginning, but right now I can add a fish from the store that has maybe a little bit of ick, and I throw it in the tank, and within the probably a week the ick is completely gone um, and another good point Rico made is we have these tanks with so much biological filtration so many microorganisms have you ever asked yourself don't you think all these microorganisms at least one of them in there I mean there's probably millions in in our water column don't you think one of them probably eats ick to a certain extent I mean I believe so. I mean, even corals, for that matter. Corals grab stuff from the water particles. Don't you think they'll maybe grab the ick and eat it? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Um, and I'm sure there's people still watching this video saying, no, no, you got to quarantine. But really think of it for a little bit. I really doubt that the person saying that is quarantining every single invertebrate, every single coral, and ensuring that not even a drop from whatever water source that invertebrate came from doesn't hit their main display. I mean, if you really break it down, guys, it's impossible if you ask me to rid your tank from ick, even in the quarantine system, because invertebrates, you can't expose them to copper. You can expose, you cannot expose them to heavy medication. So what's telling you that in a hermit, let's say a hermit crab or a snail's shell, there's not going to be a little egg of ick inside and that later hatches and comes out in your tank. I mean, I think you guys see where I'm going with this. It's just really, I think, impossible to quarantine your system to rid it of ick. So my way, guys, what I recommend, especially you newer guys, is do not worry about ick. Let Mother Nature do her thing. Feed your tank. Um, you know, if you want to go with the garlic thing, go ahead. I'm sure that helps your immunity. A garlic won't specifically target the ick. It just makes the food more enticing for the fish uh, which allows them to build their immunity sooner so guys if you do have ick just go on with your day don't go crazy don't quarantine your fish and please guys if you're that person that puts copper to every single fish you grab you know take a second to think about it do you really need to treat that fish with copper uh, i know i've never treated any of my fish with copper i've probably bought not too many fish, but through my friends and everybody I've helped set up, I've probably gone through maybe 60 fish and I've never had an issue with ick, ever. I've had an issue with brook, but never with ick. So guys, I think this video has been long enough. Uh, we're going to end it here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I touched on some topics that you know you guys enjoyed. I know this video is probably going to be a little bit controversial, but I think it needs to be said. I think it needs to be talked about. I'd for sure love to hear what you guys got to say down in the comment box below. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you guys agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think I covered some good points? You know, am I going in the right direction or am I just lucky with my experience in my reef tank? I'd love to hear what you got to say. So we're going to leave this video here, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.